Uh, Psalm 139 is probably one of my favorite psalms, but it seems so appropriate in the day that we're living today. One question that continues to come to mind in this uh, uh, pandemic culture is, is this. Who can we really trust? Have you asked yourself that question? Who do I trust? Uh, there are now what they call fact checkers all over Facebook, but we don't, we don't necessarily trust the fact checkers, do we? Who do we trust? Who can you absolutely trust with your life? In 2019, Gallup Poll asked people which professions that they trust the most. Now, rather than going down the list, I chose to just share the top three and the bottom three. The top three professions, 84% of the people trusted nurses. Uh, 67% trusted doctors. And 66% trusted pharmacists. They were all medical professions. And we're beginning even to doubt some of that in these days when uh, Dr. Fauci, the one who knows everything, has backtracked on what he thought he knew. And, of course, I understand that they're learning while they're going at this point. They're making estimates, and we understand that. But uh, nurses, doctors, medical professions, we tend to trust them. We trust the doctor in many, many cases when we should get a second opinion, we still trust him because he's a, a doctor, because doctors know everything. But then the bottom three are kind of interesting. Uh, telemarketers. 9% of the people trusted telemarketers. And then car salesmen rate at 8%. And then the lowest on the totem pole is Congress. 8% of the people in 2019 trusted Congress, And that's a scary thought when you think about the fact that they make decisions that affect your life, right? And so that, that's just a survey that Gallup did. Of course, that was before the pandemic struck. I'm sure that some of that maybe has changed, but it, that's the science. <laughs> that's the, the survey. But now who can really we trust? Uh, I'm, I'm just drawn to this truth, especially these days. Who can I trust? Um, Micah chapter 7 and verse number 5 says this, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And then in Psalm 146, verse 3, the Bible says, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, that is a, a human, in whom there is no help. Psalm 118, verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 40, verse number 4 says, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. So, Scripture tells us, and it, and it kind of weeds out every other person except one that we're supposed to trust. Can you trust people? You can. You can, but sometimes people are deceptive, aren't they? Sometimes people aren't telling the truth. Uh, who can you always trust every single time? Who is it? The Lord. You can always trust Him. Why? Why can you, can you always trust Him? God. Well, Psalm 139 is um, a detailed psalm, and it reminds us of uh, some of the attributes, not all of them, but some of the attributes of our God, the God that loves us, the God that sent His Son to die for us, the God that we follow, the one that we trust, hopefully, with our life. Before we go on, I want to ask you this question. Do you trust God? 
Do you really trust God? In a practical way, in your life, do you trust God? Or do you tend to rely upon everybody else to tell you what to do? Do you trust God? Or do you depend upon the latest poll on Facebook? Who do you trust? Because I want to show you beyond a shadow of a doubt this morning why the only person in the universe you can absolutely trust every single time is the Lord. You can put stock in His Word because He never has lied one time, nor will He ever lie. It's the only constant in the whole universe. The only thing that doesn't change. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same today and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. Psalm 139 tells us why. We can absolutely trust God all the time. First of all, we can trust Him because He knows everything about us. He knows every single thing about you. I love that. It says in verse 1, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. He knows when you sit down and stand up. And it says, And Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. What he's saying is what you know about me, God, is far beyond what I'm able to know about myself. He's omniscient. Omniscience. All-knowing. He knows all things. He knows what we do. In verse 2, it says that He knows when you literally sit down and when you stand up. How many of you know how many times you sat down and stood up today? I mean, as smart and wise as you people are, you can't tell me how many times you sat down and stood up today? How many hairs are on your head? Say, fewer than there used to be. You don't know, do you? Have have you counted lately? The Bible says that God knows every single thing about you. Every single detail of your life. He knows what you do. Verse 3 says He knows all of our ways. He knows the very words that we say. Whether audibly or whether words that we say in our hearts. Friends, there are people today who are afraid to open up their life and share their life with you because they're afraid of what you'll think about them if you knew what they've done or what they're doing or what they're thinking. It's hard to get close to some people. It is. They have this like um, wall in front of them. Play their cards close to their chest. Because they don't want you to know everybody, everything about them. God knows every single thing about you. He, there's nothing that He doesn't know. It's like it's wide open in front of Him. He knows the times when you did well but nobody noticed. He knows how hard your life has been lately. He knows all about your family life at home. He knows what you've given and what you've withheld. He knows your innermost thoughts and desires. He knows why you're here today. He knows what's weighing heavily upon your heart today. He knows the fears that you have. He knows everything. Is there anything you wish God didn't know about you? See, uh, you know, it's hard for us to perceive this, and, and the Bible says it is. 
is beyond us. It's too wonderful, too full of wonder for us even to truly wrap our brains around the fact that there's nothing God doesn't know about us. Here's, the, here's a, a positive thing I want you to think about. Yes, God knows what you've done wrong. But here's the deal. He also knows why. He knows the whole motive. He knows what led you to the decisions that you've made in your life, good or bad. He knows those things. Things you've never expressed or never shared with anybody on this planet. God knows. He knows the pain that you feel right now that you've hidden from everyone else. Have you ever noticed why suicide is always a surprise? People that are left behind say, why didn't I see something? Why didn't I do something? Because suicide is a compilation of thoughts that are private, that are stuffed inside. Plans that that one person makes that he doesn't share with anyone else. But listen, God knows those thoughts. How many of you had why questions this year? Why? God, why? Why could you do this? Well, he knows why. There is there is a sovereign reason why. We may or may not understand it in this lifetime. But there is a why. Because our God knows everything. He knows the past and the present and the future. All in one glimpse. Now that's beyond us. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the future be, you know, looks like. When I, when I start to think about what it possibly might look like, it's a scary, scary thing. But I'm comforted because I know that it won't be a surprise to the Lord. And that if I'm His child, I will not be alone going through that. And that's the next point in the message found in verses 7 to 12. Why can I trust God? I can trust Him because He will never leave me. Verses 7 to 12 in Psalm 39 says this, Whither shall I go from Thy Spirit? Or whither shall I flee from Thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell or the place of the dead, behold, Thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of Of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. What have you done in the dark that you thought that nobody else knew? God knew it. And here's the deal. He was right there with you when you did it. He'll never leave you. I mean, think about the significance of that, church. Because God knows everything about us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yet He chooses not to leave us. I wonder how many people have forsaken us or how many people have we forsaken because they did something to us. That's why you can't trust people. Why why would a mother forsake a four-year-old? That's what my mom did. Why? doesn't make sense. What could be so important that she would fall in love with a guy at Singer Sewing Machine where she worked and leave my dad and my sister and myself, me four years old, we just bought a house two years before she left. Why would she do such a thing? It's not even natural. Because you can't trust people. Because they're people. Because they're sinners. Every single one of us are sinners. Who can you trust? You can trust the Lord because he will never, ever leave you. The psalmist said, when thy father and thy mother forsake thee, the Lord will lift thee up. Amen. He's omnipresent. 
That's the theological term. It means all, always present. He's everywhere at the same time. There is no place in the universe where God isn't. It's impossible because he's omnipresent to hide anything from him. Every sin we commit is done in his presence. It says even darkness is light to him. The scripture says men love darkness because their deeds are what? Evil. But the Bible says even darkness is light unto God. Likewise, on a positive sense, and from a positive standpoint, since God is everywhere, we're never alone. We're absolutely, you may feel alone, but you're never ever alone. Verse 10 says, Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand, that's his strong hand, shall hold me. You ever felt so weak you just need to be held up? You just can't do it anymore? You just need somebody to hold you up? That verse right there says, When you're at your darkest moment, when you're so weak you cannot stand, he says, I'm there to hold your hand and to hold you up. I like that. That's why I love God. I can trust Him. Even when I feel so lonely. Because He will never leave me. I wonder if you ever feel abandoned or forgotten or lonely like as if nobody really cares or nobody really understands what you're going through right now have you ever felt like if I weren't even here nobody would miss me I mean you would never admit that in church right but I wonder how many of us have felt that it's comforting to know the truth that that almighty God will never leave you there will never be a time. And you know, even at the lowest point in this life, when you're about to die, when you're looking death right in the face, He's there. He will usher you into eternity as a believer. There will never be a time in your whole life as a believer that you will be alone. Even when you die, He sends His angels to take you to heaven. You're not alone. I once knew a lady who uh, shared with me her greatest fear. And that's a rare thing, really. Uh, I can tell you a lot about a person if I know what their greatest fear is and what their greatest um, dream is. Dreams and fears. And so at one moment where this lady who knew that, that I loved her, knew that that we loved her, Uh, she shared with me that her greatest fear was to die alone. Only person I've ever known that shared that fear with me. But I'm sure that there are many like that. And I think that's one thing that this uh, COVID pandemic has has brought to light. Whereas there have been many people who have died without a family member without somebody that they love. It makes me thank God so much for those nurses and doctors who would put their lives in jeopardy to minister to people and watch them die alone and hold their hands and pray with them. There's hope this morning because our God will never leave us. Wrap your brain around that thought. He knows everything about us, and yet He will not leave us. You can trust Him. You can trust Him for another reason, and that's found in verses 13 to 16. You can trust Him because there's nothing He cannot do. There's nothing He cannot do. Verse 13 in the text says, For thou hast possessed, controlled my reins, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or incomplete or not finished yet. And in thy book, it says, all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Read that slowly. Verse 16, read it slowly. Thine eyes did see my substance, that is, me before I was born. Yet being unperfect, I wasn't complete yet. And in thy book, what book? The book of life? I don't know what book he's referring to. His book. It says, all of my members, everything that makes me who I am, my hands, my feet, my eyes, my ears, my nose, either this big, everything about me, it says, they were written down. So, God who made me, made me in such a way that He recorded every member of my body before I was ever born. That, that means that, that I was me before I was born, right? That means that to kill me before I was born would be to stop something that God started without His permission. That means that abortion, that is taking a life before it's born, because it was a person before it was born. That's what the Bible says. God recorded the members. I wonder, I wonder, when we get to heaven, what it will be like to see all of those people that never were born on this globe because somebody killed them beforehand. You say, Pastor, that's awful morbid. No, it isn't. It's exciting. It's exciting because those people that were killed before they were born here are still alive. Babies go to heaven. Yes, they do. They're innocent. They don't have the ability to make a choice between God and not. They're protected. When David's baby died, the baby that he had out of a a sinful act with Bathsheba, when that baby died, he was assured by saying that I cannot go to him. Rather, he cannot go to me, but I can go to him. He acknowledged that his baby was with the Lord. I think one of the most difficult parts of being a pastor is, um, is is performing a ceremony for a baby who died. Uh, one of the heart-wrenching sights is to see that little white casket this long. There will be no more death in heaven. And those little babies are with Jesus. We can look forward to that. You say, well, how is that possible? Because Jesus died and rose from the dead. Even so, them who believe in Christ Jesus, they'll rise from the dead as well. And because there's nothing God can't do. The Word is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 8. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. How many times did you see the word all in that verse? God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always, that's a form of all, having all sufficiency in all things may, it says, abound, not just get by, but abound to every good work. That's what Paul said. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Notice how many adjectives you find in that verse. Uh, uh, Adjectives that describe what God is able to do. Know unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, there's that word again, that we ask 
or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The psalmist reminds us this morning that there is no limit on what God can do in our life. In this life, in this world, in this country, God is absolutely able. There's nothing. There should never be a time, honestly, where we are hopeless. Although, when we look with the eyes of humanity rather than through the eyes of the Scripture, we will feel hopeless in days like this. There's nothing God can't do. Nothing. Is there anything too big for God? What's the Christian answer? No. What's the, what's the real answer in your life? What have you limited God doing? Is there anything in your life that you feel impossible? With God, all things are possible. There's one thing we remember about this Christmas season is what a miraculous time it is. We think of how impossible it would be for a woman to be pregnant who had never known a man in a physical way. Uh, amazingly, that baby she bore was predicted to come over 700 years before he was born. Uh, the place that he would be born was predicted. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Um, Isaiah 53 predicted his crucifixion. That he would give his life for a crime he didn't commit. That he would give his life for others. There's nothing he can't do. Now think about your life right now. Just you know, take inventory. What have you said this week? I just can't do. I just can't do. The scripture says, and that's the Bible, right? That's what we say we believe. The scripture says that God is not limited as to what he can do in your life. In and through you. It's a promise. And then uh, it all boils down to verses 17 and 18. Why can I trust God? Why can I absolutely trust Him with every aspect of my life? I'll tell you why. Verse 17 and 18 says, Because He really, really loves you. He really does. Verse 17 says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Those are the thoughts that God has toward people that He knows everything about them. The good, the bad, and the not so good. And yet it says, every time He thinks about you, He thinks precious thoughts. You know what? I believe that He thinks more precious thoughts about us than we think about ourselves. I do. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they were more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. That's a good thing, isn't it? Who couldn't trust a person like that? A person that loves you through thick and thin. Loves you on the good days, loves you on the bad days. Loves you when you think holy thoughts and loves you when you think evil thoughts. And it says if you could count his thoughts toward you, uh, they're the number of the sand on the seashore. Anybody ever tried to count sand? How long would it take you to count sand? We can't even count votes correctly. But it says God loves you and me and he thinks thoughts toward us that many times. We should find great comfort in the fact that he loves us that way. 
We're not used to that. Honestly, we're not. We're used to being loved conditionally. You know, I love you as long as you do this. I love you as long as you give me this. I love you as long as you love me back. God's love isn't like that. His love is, I love you even while you're a sinner. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get all cleaned up and put our suit on and get our hair primped real nice and put our makeup on before He loved us. He loved us when we were so ugly, we don't even look at ourselves. So, I end with my beginning. Who can you trust? Let's go about this week trusting Him. Because look, He really, really, really loves you. He really does. When nobody else does, He really loves you. And He proved it on the cross of Calvary. And that's why every quarter here at Sage Garden, we observe the Lord's Supper. And it's an opportunity for us to reflect and remember His love for us. So, without any further ado, if you will, turn over to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Matthew 26. And we're going to begin reading with verse number 26. 